Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from October-November 2023, paper 4, variant 1. In today's lesson, we will focus on electromagnetism and alternating current. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. Let's study together. Let's improve together. Question 6, part A says, define magnetic flux density. So first of all, we need to understand and magnetic flux density is a quantity. So we need to define this one in terms of other quantities. In order to define this one, first of all, we need to write down the equation that link magnetic flux density. So here we have B magnetic flux density. So we can write on from here B is equal to F divided by I times L times sine of theta. B can be defined in terms of F if I is unit current. So we can say if this one is unit current and L if this one is unit length. So we can say unit length and sine of theta. This is also one sine of theta is equal to one and this is equal to one if theta is 90 degrees. So this is how we can define. So if all these quantities are equal to 1, then it means magnetic flux density in magnitude is equal to the force. So this is how you can define and in the same way, any unit you can also define. So this is the key concept you need to master. You no need to remember all the definitions, but you need to understand how to define something. So this is the way how you can define any quantity or any units. Now let me show you the answer how you can write down the answer. So this is how you can write down your final answer. In the final answer you can say magnetic flux density is defined as the force. So this is equal B is equal to the force if all of them they are equal to 1. Defined as the force acting per unit current per unit length on a wire placed at right angles to the magnetic field. Mean if the angle between L and B is 90 degrees then that force is magnetic flux density. In magnitude that will be equal to magnetic flux density. So this is the angle between B and L. So B and L. So this is how you can define. You need to understand the way to define. Now just try to memorize without understanding. Part B says electrons are moving in a vacuum with speed 1.7 times 10 to 7 meters per second. The electrons enter a uniform magnetic field of flux density 4.8 milliteslas. Figure 6.1 shows the path of the electrons. The path of the electrons remains in the plane of the page. For part B1 state direction of the magnetic field. So in order to answer this question we need to understand first of all when electron is at this point what is direction of the force. So simply we can draw direction of force at this point because electron bend it means direction of force at this point. This is in downward direction. So now we can draw here so the force is down. So this is direction of the force on electron and in this case electron is moving so here. So this is direction of motion of the electron. So simply we can say this is direction of motion of electron. For this one we need to find out direction of magnetic field. So you need to understand we need to use left hand rule and Fleming left hand rule Fleming left hand rule only is valid for conventional current in flow of positive charges. So you need to understand this is only valid for conventional current. So here conventional current. Now in this case if electrons are moving to the right so what is direction of conventional current that one has to be to the left. So we can draw again. So now we have direction of the force that is down and we have direction of conventional current that is to the left. So what is direction of magnetic field? Now simply we have to use left hand. So first of all we have direction of current. You need to understand this is FBI. So this is the force. This is magnetic field direction and this is direction of conventional current. So we have force. So we can say force is 
down and current in this case you need to understand so if you move your finger you can see here like this force is down and current is to the left so the magnetic field is into the page so in this case magnetic field means the b this is into the page so this is how you can figure out simply you have to use your left hand so we have direction of current so you can use this finger first of all so this is this way and then you can rotate your hand so here here you see this is direction of current mean this is to the left and force is down so this is direction of magnetic field so this is pointing to the screen mean this is into the page so direction of magnetic field is into the page this is how you need to figure so this is how you can figure out so simply you can say direction of magnetic field in this case is into the page so simply we can write down here into the page second part says show that the magnitude of the force exerted on each electron by the magnetic field is equal to this so simply we need to understand how we can calculate the force on moving charge particles f is equal to b q v sine of theta and theta is the angle between b and v and in this case angle between magnetic field and direction of motion of electron is 90 degrees so simply we can say this is b q v because sine of 90 is 1 now simply we need to plug in values value of b is given to us that was equal to 4.8 milli tesla so 4.8 times 10 to minus 3 teslas then charge on single electron is 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs and value of v is given that is 1.7 times 10 to 7 meters per second now if we simplify this one we will get 1.3 times 10 to minus 14 newtons so this is the force on single electron if electron has this much speed and it is in this magnetic field with this magnetic flux density third part says on figure 6.1 draw an arrow to indicate direction of the centripetal acceleration of the electron where it enters the magnetic field at point x we have already discussed at point x the force magnetic force on this particle is in downward direction and this is the resultant force acting on the electron and acceleration is also in direction of resultant force so this is direction of centripetal acceleration at this point so simply you need to draw this air part four says use the information in b2 to calculate the distance d between the path of the electrons entering the magnetic field and path of electrons leaving it means value of this d we have to determine and value of d in this case you can see this is equal to two times of radius of the circle and radius of the circle we can calculate by using f is equal to mv squared divided by r because this electron is doing circular motion in magnetic field so we can use this one and value force already we have calculated in the last part that was equal to 1.3 times 10 to minus 14 newtons and mass of electron is 9.11 times 10 to minus 31 kgs then speed of electron is also given to us in the question that was equal to 1.7 times 10 to 7 square of this one divided by r so from here we can find out value of r value of r will be equal to 0.02 meters so this is value of r so the value of d will be equal to two times of this value 0.02 so we will get 0.040 meters so this is value of d 0.040 meters so this is how we can answer part c says the electrons in b are replaced with positrons that are moving with speed 3.4 times 10 to 7 meters per second along the same initial path as the electrons the positrons enter the magnetic field at point x on figure 6.1 on figure 6.1 draw a line to show the path of the positrons through the magnetic field so first of all we need to understand positron and electron they have opposite charge 
and they have the same masses as the charge is opposite it means the force on positron will be in upward direction so opposite to the force on electron so it means positron will go upward it will be deflected in upward direction now we need to look at the speed this speed is two times of the speed of electron so we can write on here r is equal to mv divided by p q so if the speed is double it means r will be double because they are in the same magnetic field they have the same charge they have the same mass so if v is double so it means radius will be double and this formula you can also derive magnetic force provides the centripetal force so we can say b q v this is equal to mv squared divided by r so we can cancel this v with this v so r will be equal to mv so here we have mv divided by pq so this is how you can derive this formula this is very important one you need to remember this one and also you need to understand how to derive this now simply we need to sketch the path so first of all we can look at this diameter of this one this is about 1.9 so this diameter has to be double 1.8 and the radius of this one will be 0.9 so this is about 0.9 now simply we can sketch this so positron will deflect somewhat like this so this is how you need to sketch so if you sketch this one for this question you will get theory marks so this has theory marks let me show you the better one we can clear this one so let me clear this clear this one and if you draw like this it should be acceptable you can simply sketch like this